Hello everybody, Abbott's Brother here, and today we're going to be looking at the performance of Shadow of the Tomb Raider on my RX 5700 XT. Uh, this is going to be two videos, one in 1440p and one in 4K. This is the 1440p video, and the reason I'm starting at the desktop here is so I can show you right away in the custom profile in the Radeon software. Um, you have to turn off FreeSync. Sounds kind of weird. But there it is. Um, it wasn't a problem for me playing at 1080p in Shadow of the Tomb Raider, but once I started to crank the resolution, uh, FreeSync On introduced a ton of micro stutter, so I had to turn it off. So here we are, and yes, you can view these from in-game, but since we're on the desktop, I'm doing it this way anyway. We have to be exclusive full screen for me to be able to use the... Um, virtual super resolution so I can run it at 1440 and DirectX 12 on the RX 5700 XT is kind of a must here I did try uh, we're at SMAA T2X here for the anti-aliasing uh, SMAA 4X uses MSAA which is a big frame rate drag so this is as high as I want to go with the anti-aliasing but yeah I did experiment with DirectX 11 and frame rate was just awful um, so it says custom here because if you set it to highest, there are actually still some settings you can turn up, and I turned those up. So we're ultra here, 16 x anisotropic, ultra, no ray tracing on the 5700 XT, unfortunately. Or maybe fortunately, I don't know. Maybe it wouldn't do that well with uh, if it had ray tracing. HBO plus, pure hair is at normal, screen space is high. Everything over here is turned on. The only thing we don't have is motion blur. So, let's see how it goes. And we've got my overlay there. I really like the layout of this overlay now. I think I'm... I don't know if I'm going to do any more tweaking to it. It's got the information that hopefully is the most useful to you. The only thing I th could add... That is kind of missing. I could add an uh, indicator of the CPU fan speed, but that's that's about it. Um, so we have to go in here anyway, but so you can see in game, yep, here we are SMAAT2X and the graphics. We just went through these, so let's run the benchmark. One thing you're going to notice with this game is that it is very CPU heavy. And you can see we're loading in here. I've seen it a few times when loading into a big area. The CPU has actually gone to 90%. Now, that's not a big indicator during load times. Basically, during load, the game will use as much CPU as is available to it. So if you have a l fewer cores or fewer threads than I have, then it's just going to take you longer to load. That's not going to... Using the CPU during load times is expected, but in game, I've seen it hit 65% uh, going around Paititi. And that's my main plan for this video is we're running the benchmark, obviously, and then I'm going to take a run around Kwakiaku and Paititi. Those are the two biggest frame rate drags because when you're out in the jungle, exploring the jungle and doing stuff. A lot of times, even though you have a ton of foliage everywhere, you're not actually going to be placing a huge load. It's a load on the GPU, but it's not going to be huge because your draw distances are frequently going to be quite short. Like even this, the draw distance is actually not that far uh, in scene itself. A lot of it is, is backdrop. <clears throat> Excuse me which makes it easier, easier to render, easier to get a good frame rate. And since my last videos, since my Doom video, I, uh, I have upgraded the driver to the latest version. We are now on 20.5.1. And the main difference that I noticed with 20.5.1 is the power consumption has dropped. I mean, we're still hitting 171 watts right now. But I was averaging between 170, 180, and now I'm between 150 and 170. So whatever they did... I mean, in addition to other things, I understand there were some other things they did with the... Uh, 
I don't know, desktop calls or something. Whatever they did, it also optimized some power usage, which I just find kind of weird. I'm running the exact exact same undervolt that I've always run on this card since I've been making these videos. <clears throat> Excuse me. Yep, there's 62%. You can see the CPU is pretty heavy load. And yes, I'm only running 3,900 megahertz on the CPU instead of 4 gigahertz. 3,900 gigahertz instead of 4 gigahertz. Um, the CPU was stable at 4 gigahertz but in games but when i was doing rendering and stuff i was getting uh, some crashes so i just backed it down 100 megahertz on the overclock and now i have no problems whatsoever in fact i'm even seeing the voltage uh play around a little more you know i'm seeing it's, it's like before when it was hitting max clocks it was the, vol the voltage was drooping a little bit more, whereas it's not doing that as much now. So this is probably just healthier for the whole system all the way around. So I forget where I... <sighs> Hidden City. <coughs> Excuse me. Oh, so we'll be loading right into to buy TD. So I'm just going to take a lap around. Take a lap around the city. Where am I? Oh, that's right. I'm in here. So right off the bat, we get some good draw distance and some high CPU usage. So again, this is maxed out graphics pretty much. The only thing that's not turned on is motion blur. And the anti-aliasing uh, is SMAAT2, not 4X, so there's no MSAA involved. But you really can't do much more here. And this is what I meant, and obviously I'm losing 2 or 3 FPS from recording with Relive. But this is what I meant when I have said and can, will continue to say that... Oh, sorry there, fella. That the 5700 XT is a 1440p graphics card if you want max settings. Which, let's face it, if you're somebody who's spending a ton of dough on a graphics card... If you're like me, you want to crank the settings because you feel like, well, I spent all this money, I want to turn the settings up. And 1440p is where you can do that comfortably. But I do, I will say again, the CPU is just nuts in this game. This is easily as bad as Assassin's Creed Origins and Odyssey. Which makes me think maybe those games aren't as badly optimized as everybody claimed. I mean, I think they do have optimi optimization issues because I'm not having any issue holding 99% utilization. But the CPU usage in those games, everybody's like, oh, well, that's terrible optimization. Well, both Assassin's Creed Origins and Odyssey have a ton of NPCs on screen. And that's probably just all the high CPU usage is. You want to have all these computer-controlled characters uh, basically, you know, running all kinds of different scripts for their idle animations or their repeating animations and all that stuff. Well, that takes CPU power. So I really don't think high CPU usage in a game with a ton of NPCs in it, I'm starting to think that's not really lack of optimization. That's just the cost of making a game with this many NPCs on screen at once. Trying to get somewhere where I can have a good aerial view. Actually, you know what? Let's climb up and then we'll take the zip line down. Well, let's do that. But if you're looking at the sky, yeah, you get good frames. There we go. Now we're getting now we're getting it, but we're holding above 60. The 4K performance is another matter entirely. I have done some 4K stuff with this. And, uh... 4K... This is another low to medium game. You're not gonna be... It's not gonna be a surprise at 4K. You know, Doom was great at 4K. But that was running Vulcan. This is running DX12, though, but... 
Having to turn off free sync really ticks me off. So obviously I had to do that in Assassin's Creed Origins and Odyssey, but those games had a reputation for having issues, of a variety of issues on Radeon. And Shadow of the Tomb Raider that I've seen really doesn't. It's, you know, it, it really doesn't have a reputation for being problematic in that sense, so it kind of caught me by surprise. Let's, uh, let's see, is there anything under the water? Yeah, let's, let's, let's swim down. And yes, I have the Cayman's Breath upgrade. She has maximum breath upgrades, so she can actually swim for a decent amount of time underwater. Oh, there's actually stuff down here. Didn't even know that. There's a, oh, it's a conquistador chest, and I don't have the lockpick yet either. Kind of annoying how they do that in this game. It's like, yes, there are all these chests and things hidden around, but until you get the lockpick, you can't open them, which means you're going to have to go back there at some point. And you can't even get the lockpick. The lockpick is acquired... I had to look this up online. The lockpick is acquired from a vendor, but the vendor doesn't show up in Paititi until you've completed a certain number of side quests or something. So, hopefully I get to uh, open that chest, but... I mean, I'm, I'm not somebody who likes to go around and do 100% do of every game that I play. Once I feel like the game isn't really interesting me anymore, then I tend to just move on to something else. But uh, I really enjoyed Shadow of the Tomb Raider, so I've been, I finished the game like two days ago, and, you know, I've been sticking around and doing some side missions, because you can go back and play the game after you finish the main story. Uh, in a pre-end-of-game save state, so it's not like, oh, it has post-game content, and it really doesn't. Let's get Lara out of this outfit. It really doesn't in that sense, like, it's not a... a uh, it's not a post-game world state. This is the most classic, I think. And, correctly, unlike the most recent movie, the tops of her pants are tucked into her boots, which is correct for being in the jungle. Now, a sleeveless tank is probably not correct. If you're going to be in the jungle, you want to you wanna cover up to prevent, you know, running up against poisonous plants or bugs or stuff, but... At least that's what I've always thought. And this was the big spot right here. This is probably the biggest frame rate drag in the game, is this scene right here. Because you've got a lot of NPCs, so you've got some CPU usage. You've got smoke. You've got a lot of interactions happening on screen. You've got a lot of, you've got water reflections right there. So this, to me, is the big spot. And you see we're just at 59 FPS, 60. And I don't know if this will show up on YouTube, but it is perfectly smooth. And video memory usage is at just about 6 gigs. But yeah, I really did enjoy uh, Shadow of the Tomb Raider. There's a lot less combat and a lot more tomb raiding, which, you know, that was my main criticism of the previous two games, of 2013 and... 2013 and Rise of the Tomb Raider. They really felt more like shooting experiences and not really ab about tombs and such and this remedies that people people will ask for that and i believe this was i don't believe this was crystal dynamics that did the main work on this i believe it was idos montreal and uh, they gave us what we wanted and i'm very happy with that now there are a couple of issues with the story of the game the whole angle of uh you know that secret group called trinity <laughs> That was supposedly, you know, built up to be this big, dangerous uh, thing in uh, Rise of the Tomb Raider. Trinity is really kind of a letdown in this in this game. And I'm not going to spoil it, but... If you're hoping for that big... Uh, some big exposition and 
all that stuff. It it's, feels really shoehorned into this game. So that's not uh, not the best thing. But Lara's journey through this game is a very good one. You know, she goes through some some good transformation and you know, has some inter good internal conflicts, which basically get resolved for me very satisfactorily by the end. So. It's more about just enjoy Lara's journey and don't try to focus too much on, hey, what, what happened to all the stuff that Trinity was doing or was planning? And it's like, well, the Trinity plotline really is not treated too well in this game. But everything else really is, I thought. Now, if you were a fan of somebody who liked the combat of the 2013 game and of Rise of the Tomb Raider... Then you're going to be disappointed in Shadow because there really is not a lot of combat. I'd say, I believe I put about 25 hours into this game. I forget what it showed. Go back to the start of the video. You'll see when I was showing the desktop. Uh, when I was showing my desktop, it said the total number of hours I played. Um, for the amount of time, for out of 25 hours that I've played this game, I'd say maybe 15% of it was actually in third-person, guns-out combat. 15%. That's, that's just not a lot, not compared to the previous games. Previous games, it was more like 50%. In 2013, there was a lot of shooting in that game. Okay, can we shoot a barrel? Actually, now let's use my pistol. Oh, that was a challenge. I had no idea. So, yeah, if that's about it there, that was uh, Paititi and Kwakiaku. Oh, kill them. Kill the bugs on the ground to collect poison and do all kinds of stuff with the poison. There's some very good... Uh, very good grenades. Well, not grenades. Mostly arrow effects. Uh, there we go. And the tombs. They're not very inventive in terms of... Um, in terms of, like, traps. Like, it's the same traps that get used across Impossible. all the different... Uh, across all the different tombs. But they are uniquely designed... You know, they've got different topographical layouts and all this other stuff going on with them that make them a lot of fun to explore. I really had a lot of flashbacks to uh, playing the original Crystal Dynamics trilogy, which is one of my favorite set of Tomb Raider games. Uh, Tomb Raider Legend. Tomb Raider Legend. Um, Anniversary and Underworld. Those are like three of the best... Legend especially. Legend is like my standard for what I expect from Lara, from a Tomb Raider game. Other people have different differing favorites, of course, but that one's mine. And it's not that Legend is like the standard for gameplay and story and all that. That's just my favorite version of Lara Croft. Yep. Other bug. See, that's the one thing here. The wildlife never attacks her. The pigs go run and hide. The only wildlife that attacks her are jaguars and scripted scenes that I've encountered. And there's one tomb that I've done so far that had wolves show up and attack her. A pack of wolves attacked her. Other than that, wildlife hasn't really done much at all. Um, let's travel to one more location. Let's go to Let's go to the to a place right at the beginning. Canyon ruins, Jaguar den, plane wreckage. So this will be very from a spot very early in the game. So you'll encounter this next place very very quickly in the game. Though the intro is fairly long. It's got a pretty extended uh introduction so it is kind of a kind of a sad moment when you realize that this is the end of this particular trilogy 
because I feel like with Shadow, Shadow of the Tomb Raider, they really found the groove of what I wanted in a Tomb Raider game anyway. But yeah, this is just a uh, heavy jungle landscape, and this is what I meant. You can see that there are... You got plenty of good frames. We kind of have some long-ish draw distance here. The only other place that has a ton of NPCs is the Mission of St. John's. I'm not sure how long this video is, but I could definitely... I believe you can fast travel there. Maybe that was a one-off. I remember there were collectibles at the mission. I hope I can go back there. Yes, I'm not hunting animals right now. And as you can see, what are those red spots? Well, the red spots on the animals are the... Uh, I believe it's the hearts. Helps you land critical shots better. So, this is a little run around the jungle. Yeah, let's see if we can go to the mission, because there were a high number of NPCs on screen there. And then we'll call it a video. So where was the mission? Mission gate. Here it is. Oh yeah, and there are missions I can do there. I haven't been back here since I played through it in the main game. I don't know how big of an area it is. I assume there are collectibles and stuff. But basically there are... The way this works, you either find secrets on the map by talking to NPCs, or you actually have to find a map that uh, reveals their location. Ah yes, here we go. Mission of San Juan. I believe this doesn't go any... No, they show that it does. Oh yeah, it does go somewhere because you can hunt wolves. And this is Laura, backdrop. I have to talk to you. Wait, what? Why does jump? That? That's part of what we have to talk about. Meet me in the courtyard. Okay, I'm not gonna do that. This is looks like it's a DLC mission or something. I'm gonna give Jonah a wide berth. Sorry, Jonah. No offense. I just want to run around the mission. Oh, we got some low for I saw a dip to 57 there. Must have been loading in. And you can see we had a corresponding uh, increase in frame time. Oh, they're both hanging out here. Okay. Yeah, I barely explored this the first time I was here. So here we get some draw distance. Yeah, it was loading in. Loading in again, I assume. Yeah. But just an incredible amount of detail in the environments in this game. So yeah, 1440p. Max settings. Now, if you have a ultra-wide monitor, which is what I'm looking at, I don't know if I'm going to get one or not. Kind of hard to uh, justify the expenditure right now. But if you had an ultra-wide 1440p... I'd imagine you wouldn't be able to play this maxed out because you see we're right on the cusp of 60 right now. We're, we've been 63, 69. We've been gone up to the mid 70s. A couple times we dipped to just under 60. But if you're going to add a whole bunch of pixels on either side of the screen, I'd imagine you're going to have to turn some settings down, and it's not going to be uh, like it's not going to be max settings. 1440p ultra wide. That, that'll have to be a different set of videos that I do at a later time. Oh, and a new base camp. Nice. So that is Shadow of the Tomb Raider at 1440p, folks. Hope this video gave you some answers to questions you might have. Thanks for watching.